this job is going to take me away from my family for X, Y, Z, or I'm going to have to move them. It's a big change. Lindsay Lohan type of actress has got caught up in a lot of stuff, and it feels like you just did it. It's hard to also know who to trust within the industry. Because you have to be polite and nice and grateful that you have that kind of you platform. You have to be to... polite and nice and grateful. Okay, perfect. See, Lauren, I told you. <laughs>Scarlett's in the studio. She's been following me for years, been trying to get on this show for a long time. She just has been waiting to get in touch with me for, delirious. I don't know, long, And where long have you time. been? He's delirious. I've, He's I've, been on the runway. I've been on the runway, you know. Um, yeah, we've been, our flight was yesterday at 6 p.m. It took off at 2 a.m. It landed here at 7 a.m. And here we are. So you took a red eye, but you didn't intend to take a red eye. We yeah. said goodbye to our children at 5 p.m., thinking we were leaving at six and then we landed at Michael, seven. Michael, I can't hear your whole life story. So I'm just, <laughs> I have to ask what her skincare is on right now. So I got in the elevator and you have like a dewy glow situation. What's happening? I, what's happening? I, I have not, I'm so exhausted. I haven't slept in a very long time. It could be because I use our, I'm, I just use, this is what I use every day. I use our cleanser every day. I use serum in the morning and then the moisture daily moisturizer that's what i use every morning do you mix it with like foundation or cc cream or is this i don't put any foundation on i have some uh concealer on because i desperately needed it this morning i have a little like blush and like some little shimmer and that's it so you keep it simple yes is that because when you're filming it's so much glam and makeup and pulling and you go through the car wash I get. I don't know what I would be if I would have like more of a full, full face of makeup if I didn't work on in a job where I wore makeup for the last like you know thirty years. But I do wear a lot of makeup for film and stuff, so that's probably part of it. Yeah. Well, the glow is beautiful. Thanks. I honestly, I could be because we just launched a blue clay mask that I used a day ago too, because my skin is so tired, also from wearing a lot of makeup for work and stuff like that. So it could be that it did take a lot of the redness out actually. And you, can know. you bring it down to your neck? The mask? Yeah. Yeah, it's so, it's totally gentle. It doesn't – I didn't – I can't stand that kind of clay, like dry, cracky. That gives me acne because I have acne-prone skin. So if I use like a, a cracky clay mask, you know, that like flakes off and stuff, I it's not good for me. Michael's so our clay mask notes. stays wet. He's taking notes. Do you ever use a mask? I, I'm going to now if you tell me to. Do you put it in your beard? I think oh, you're supposed well, to, right? Well, yeah, that's that's the difficult thing. You know, sometimes you wear those masks and they just kind of hang loose on the hair. It doesn't. So I get at least I get it up here. You have to you like know? brush it in there. Yeah, it's not great, but you know, I'll take what I can get. I want to go way back to when you're young and you decide that you want to be an actress. What's that moment? Is there an epiphany? Um, I don't. I I don't think I had an like a an epiphany moment. I definitely was into singing, dancing, jazz, hands, Broadway, like all of that stuff. So I watched a lot. My mom took me to a lot of theater when I was growing up. Um, she would wait on the half price ticket line in Times Square and then we would go and see a show, a musical um, when we could afford it and when there was, you know, whatever time to do it or... I saw a lot of musical movies growing up, like movies from my mom's childhood, all the Rodgers and Hammerstein movies and like Judy Garland movies, you know, like Vincent Minnelli movies and stuff like that. And so I just I don't I think it was kind of baked in there. And then I I I was one of those singing, dancing kids all around my apartment. And then my someone had told I think my older brother, one of his friends was doing commercials or something like that. And the mom who was friends with my mom at school said, oh, you know, you should bring you have I have three siblings, four kids. She was like, you, you should bring your kids to this commercial agent and see if, you know, they maybe they want maybe they'll be interested or whatever. So we all met and went with this commercial agent. They didn't want any of us except my older brother, Adrian. And I was devastated, like really, really devastated. Um, and how old were you? I was probably seven. So and my mom you know, said to me, because she had, we didn't have, you know, we were totally broke. We didn't have a means to really do any kind of extracurricular activities that much. And she was like, if you really want to do this, like there's some expenses to it. You have to get headshots. It's like, I have to take time out of my day to take you to auditions and stuff. You have to prepare things. 
you know, and I was seven, so it's hard. I have a seven or eight and a half year old daughter. And so you never know if kids are like, it's a whim or they're really serious about it. And like, we didn't really have the means to just kind of like do, you know, do it casually. And she was like, if you want to do it, like you really have to commit. And I was really committed to it. And so we kind of, you know, my mom was like, okay. She saw that I was really committed to it. I went and did acting classes at um, this uh, Lee Strasberg Institute in here in, in the city and got headshots and started going out to meet people. And that's how I started working. And what's your first break that you remember? Um, my first, the first thing I ever booked was a KitchenAid voiceover commercial. Um, and I never booked another commercial again. Um, and, um, and after that, I did a off-Broadway play called Sophistry where I had one line in it with Ethan Hawke. And then I booked a job. I booked a film role in a Rob Reiner movie called North, um, with Elijah Wood and had this crazy cast. Faith Ford played my mom and John Ritter played my dad. And we played this kind of all-American family. It's actually a really sweet book and film. Um, and then that was it. And then I started, I was kind of, you know, the thing is back, I don't know if it's still like this, but you, you know, in New York used to have, I, I mean, I think more now it's different, obviously post pandemic and everything and with zoom. And I know a lot of actors are auditioning on, you know, doing tapings and stuff like that, which is unfortunate oh, because that's brutal. it is brutal. And like being in person is like, it's just, it's, you have, it, you can't. How can you get the nuance of someone like yeah, when we're not even actors, people. but we won't do this unless it's like this because it's we tried it on Zoom and it's a disaster. It's, it's tough, you yeah. know. It's really tough, and and I feel for you know actors today because it's it's you put so much work into these tapings, like you know, I, and it's just a constant kind of letdown. But I um, anyway, there you know it was a thriving kind of casting process here when I was a kid, fortunately, and so agents would see kids in LA and then they would see kids, you know, in New York and they'd go through, they'd kind of do like a search on both coasts. And so you would go in and sometimes it was a cattle call and sometimes you'd go in and it was like very specific and you got to know casting directors as a kid. And if they liked you, even if you didn't book a job, but you got good feedback, you know, you they would call you in for other stuff. And so that's how I started. I just... What is it like it being a, a child on set? Is it a different dynamic or is it the same as when you're adult? Like, are you going to school? How is your mom there? Like, what? how is that? What does that look like? You are. Yeah, you definitely. There's a lot of rules about that stuff. So and because, you know, it was like abused for decades, like for a long time. And so there were certain cases that kind of paved the way for how kids are educated and treated on set now. So there's very like specific rule, SAG rules, guild rules about how. And like, I'm sure that, you know, child labor rules about how kids are, how much work they can do when they have breaks, how much schooling you need. You have to have a, an adult chaperone or, you know, parent or, you know, with you and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's hard to also know who to trust within the industry when when you're young. I, I feel like it's hard to know who to trust within the industry in general. But when you're young, like you, it's really cool that it sounds like your mom sort of helped streamline everything. For she you. did. I yeah. was really fortunate. I had, you know, not everybody has a great experience with their stage mom in quotes, but my mom was really, she was great. You know, she was very loving and responsible and, you know, really watched out for me and all of us, you know, but I, because I was, she was my, you know, response, she was my adult, my responsible adult. She, she really did a great job of that. And I think that's what kept me from probably a lot of weird situations. You know? You're you're so lucky. I just read like, um, I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong, but Jeanette McCurdy's book mm -hmm. about her stage mother. And it was like, right. I was the whole time my jaw was on the ground. Yeah, I, mean, I know. There's a lot of, I mean, you know, in any, any situation where kids are working, you know, there's going to be whatever it is, whether it's, you know, dance or music or, you know, film TV or sports or you know, you're always going to have those unfortunate situations where parents are kind of taking advantage of their kids and living vicariously through their kids. But, you know, I was I was lucky I didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, it's like but. everyone hears the, the horror stories of Macaulay Culkin and like him making all that money and then kind of losing it because the parents took advantage. Does that was that issue kind of solved when you were working or was that something that was was uh, out there still? Um, I mean, that situation, you know, with Mac, I think was very particular because he also, you know, it was his parent they separated and his dad was his Messy. manager. And so that was a whole thing where there was like a percentage involved and whatever. I mean, I think if I'm wrong, I may be wrong in this, but I think it was one of the little rascals actually 
that had a case where it was a similar thing where his parents yeah, you're like right, you're right. took all his money or something like that. I don't know all the details. I'm like misspeaking probably, but I believe that that was like that's what, where you know the kind of line was drawn as far as like you know how you you have to have a open a trust and like a certain percentage of your salary goes into that trust and you know X Y Z. I think you're still paying taxes like an adult though, which is bizarre. Um, They'll get you every time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think you're still taxed the same amount as as an adult would be. Uncle so the Sam Gerber baby pays baby. taxes. One hundred percent. Wow. A lot of taxes. Yes. Wow. That but is they, crazy. But the Gerber baby, the last time I checked, is still not eligible to vote. So that's un okay. unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember yeah. when you start when you started to transition into more adult roles? Was there like a movie that evolved your career into a different? I don't know a different a different way. Um, I mean, I had I had several of those like along the way because it was such a you know it's, it's like as if I like retired. I just said I feel like I retired, but it's been such a long run. So there's yeah. been like you know different kind of ups and downs or whatever that have like different transitional periods in my career, much like whatever life I guess in general. Like where you um, you know I. I what, how you transition from like a child actor to like a adolescent and then like into your you know young adulthood and you know how you're seen you go from like being an ingenue into you know roles that are more and are established in a different kind of way I mean a huge turning point for me was um getting cast in the horse whisperer like that was a big you know it was a, my first big studio film where I had a leading role I'd done a lot of independent film before that. Um, that's what I said to Michael. I said, that's the first movie that I remember you in. I was a little girl and I thought, who is this cool girl on screen? But there, I don't, there wasn't Google, so I couldn't search who you were. Like, I just could see you on screen. You couldn't go find, maybe there was Google, but I was too young to use it. Yeah, you needed to get a Blockbuster card and then you could probably go and look I love that movie, The Horse Whisperer, though. It's iconic. It really is iconic. It's a great book, too. And yeah. it, was, it was a great, you know, it was a wonderful experience making it. But that was, a that was, I was also 12, so it was also in a transitional period of my, you know, youth, too, because you're kind of becoming a young woman you know and it's it was it was reflected in that movie too i think yeah and the camera being right in your face it's like as you're going through puberty i mean that's a, it's intense yeah i guess i you know I, I never really um the camera being there it was some it, i've always felt like you know i i maybe it's just because i've been doing it for such a long time that the camera to me the film film camera anyway is um you know, I have such a unique relationship with it um, in a way that probably, you know, an, a musician does with an instrument. You know, it's kind of like you're you have this awareness of it, how it works, you know, when they used to use film, like what it sounds like, the the presence of it in a room and how it's your audience in a way like as if you were performing, you know, an actor on stage, you're aware of the audience there and you and the energy that that audience has in a theater and what it brings to your performance that's same I think for actors with with film cameras some whether it makes them nervous or whether they're you know they have a sort of you know a comfortable relationship in front of it or whether it's both you know it's it's unique I guess when you're getting up to film I think about this all the time and you have to go on to like a 16 hour day are you doing things in the morning before you get to the makeup chair like I would put my face in a a bucket of ice like I mean you have to be up very early then you have all these people touching your face then you have to be on camera like is there any practices or rituals that you're doing to prepare um you know I get up in the morning um again I have a like very simple skincare routine I use our products only in my makeup chair I have our products and um you know I get up wash my face, put my serum, do my moisturizer. I go to the gym um, in the morning and I've been doing Pilates for a few years that I really enjoy uh, for like an hour and then that's it, you know, go to work, rinse off again in my trailer, do the same like skincare routine and then sit in a chair and go, you know, let professional people like tape my face back together, I guess. 
when you're a, <laughs> whatever they do <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> you just when, when you're a young kid like that 12 13 and you have that kind of intention how do you contextualize that like for me i'm just thinking like i'd be going off the rails if i got any that kind of attention i, I wonder like did you have kind of a normal high school middle school upbringing or was it like people in your school saying like hey there's scarlet and she's on tv and on film um i went i had a normal high school upbringing yeah my the school i went to a school called professional children's school which is here in the city it's not a performing arts school but it's a school for kids that are um professional children Mm -hmm. (laughs) um there are uh you know a lot of school of american ballet dancers juilliard students some actors so there's people doing similar work kind of i don't know but yeah there there there's there were a few other actors there there were a lot of dancers and musicians there um but mostly kids that are you know they have careers so they're like a little you know i think there's a certain kind of understanding that we are all um you know, we're all artistic, we're all working on, you know, we all have careers, we're, you know, there was a certain kind of, I guess, respect in that way where um, you didn't feel like you were like a complete weirdo outsider. Um, It was helpful because I was, I was working a lot. I have a trip coming up and I wanted this very, very specific garden tote. It's so gorgeous. It's like big. It has a blue detail. And I didn't want to spend the amount of money that it was. So I went on Vivral. Vivral is the first of its kind luxury accessories members only club. And it provides members access to borrow designer handbags, jewelry, watches, and diamonds. So I went on there. I found my garden tote. It's so cute. And I got that. And I also got these Hermes earrings while I was there. So I'm borrowing both of the designer items for my trip. I've got my handbag. I even like matched my water bottle to my blue handbag. And then I also have my beautiful earrings that I'll be wearing too. And then when I get back from my trip, I can send it back. It's a luxury membership club. So the memberships start at $45 per month. And they gave you guys a code. This is probably one of my favorite brands I've ever worked with just because they have such a wide variety of things that you can borrow. It just has all the beautiful designer pieces. You can use code skinny to get at the top of Vivril's waitlist plus 20% off the first month of membership. This is such a good tip when you're traveling. You can swap things out. You're going to visit Vivril.com and use code skinny at checkout for 20% off your first month of membership. Plus you'll skip the entire Vivril waitlist. That's V-I-V-R-E-L-L-E dot com. Use code skinny for 20% off your first month of membership. I wanted to make sure if I was putting sunscreen on my kids that it was legit sunscreen. And after looking into tons of sunscreens, I found Sunbum. I've actually used it many times on myself, but I wanted to dive into it for kids. They have this spray, okay? It's called Baby Bum Mineral SPF 50 Sunscreen Spray. They use really gentle, lightweight, non-greasy ingredients, and it's a mineral sunscreen. This, in my opinion, is better because it creates a sunscreen barrier on the skin that blocks UV rays by absorbing and reflecting them away from the skin. Their whole motto is trust the bum because they want to be a trusted brand and educational resource, which I think is awesome, especially because they're dealing with kids and babies. Their mineral-based sunscreens are made with zinc oxide. So the one that I like, if you have toddlers or a baby, they have a kid's one, but I even use the Baby Bum Mineral SPF 50 on Zaza. It doesn't smell too crazy either. It's just like the perfect smell. And of course, I have a code for you. Sunbum is the move year round. They have so many amazing products, skincare, hair care, lip care, kids, baby, all the things. You're going to use one-time code SKINNY at checkout. You get 15% off your purchase at sunbum.com. This ends December 31st, 2023. Their mineral sunscreen is chef's kiss. Sunbum.com, code SKINNY. I have gotten real serious about my hair. I've really cracked the code when it comes to what grows my hair, what makes it thick and luscious. So what I did is I started eating more meat, lots of aminos. I also supplement. And the supplement that I use for my hair is Nutrafol. You have seen this everywhere. Millions of Americans have experienced thinning hair and Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. So this is actually clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. What I've noticed the most about taking this for so long 
is that I have less hair shedding. I can just tell that like I don't have a ton of hair on my pillowcase. Whenever I get my hair washed, I don't have a ton of hair in the bowl anymore. And that is definitely thanks to Nutrafol. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes. This is genius. So they target thinning stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism through whole body health. How I take this is I'll put it out in the morning. So it's right there. At lunch, I'll have two or three move on with my day. So easy. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering promo code skinny hair to save $10 off your first month subscription. This offer is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, you get free shipping on every order. This is a no-brainer. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code skinny hair. But is there a different level of scrutiny, I guess, or a different level of supervision? Um, supervision in what way? Meaning like, I just think about, you know, when we were young and the things we were getting into and all the mischief that we were, we were up to. And I wonder yeah. like with you, were you able to kind of have that kind of childhood or and that kind of adolescence or yeah. was it like, Hey, did people... you have a bodyguard? No, <laughs> no, I was, it was another time. I mean, you're also like, it wasn't when there was no cell phone cameras and yeah. stuff back yeah. then. So I thank God, cause I would, that would suck. And I was able to be you know, like go to a party and smoke pot and be a weird, you know, be a okay, so moron, pe- <laughs> like not have to worry about, you know, being, you know, I could be myself. Um, yeah, I can't imagine growing up with, I, I didn't, we didn't get the, these kind of phones until we were out of college. So like, no, we had that whole not. thing without that kind of, no, with, with social media God. and all that stuff. I, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine how that's a lot to, I look at young, you know, kids like people today and it's seems like a, burden. One thing about you that I admire is you've really played a long game. I think a lot of, a lot of, you know, Lindsay Lohan type of, of actresses got caught up in a lot of stuff and it feels like you just didn't like you, you've always evolved. Like you've always just really played the long game. Was that a strategy or is just natural? Did you know to just stay out of like the, out of the Lindsay Lohan S stuff? Again, I had like a really supportive mom um, and I had a, you know, it was, I think I just, I grew up in New York. I had, you know, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I I had my own, I think I I definitely, my parents were um, not industry people. You know, my mom was there to, again, take care of me and, and make sure that she was very dedicated to making sure I got my schooling and. I had my time off and, you know, my parents weren't like taking advantage of my, of my, of me in any way at that time. And so it just, I think it was, that was part, is a huge part of it. Your yeah. parents sound amazing <laughs> with four kids. Too. Yeah. So, it's a I mean, it, kids. it is, it's, yeah, yeah, it is a lot of kids. How oh. many kids do you have? Two. Two. And that's, it feels like four. <sighs> How old are your kids? Two three. and a half. And no, three and eight months. Eight oh, months. you have a baby. I have a baby. Yeah. It's so Aww, fun. Yeah, cute. it's so fun. But it's a lot of work. And four kids sounds, I mean, it's yeah. not a joke. You also have two little ki- little kids. Yeah. So, and, so maybe, yeah. yeah. But I heard it doesn't get any, I heard it just gets Well, the toddler ways. phase is, it's, the toddler phase is intense. Three is really tough. I remember my daughter, my daughter was eight and a half and she, when she was two, I thought, this is great. I don't know what everybody is talking about. Yeah. And then she turned three yeah. <laughs> and it was like being in an emotionally abusive relationship. They're, I just they're was a like, boss. Oh my God. They boss you it's around. It's crazy. It was just so you can't reason intense. With them at no that reasoning, age. no like very intense w- emotional swings and just like so bossy and adamant and like it's just crazy. And, and also these huge mood swings, constant mood swings, which I was like, this is. It's just these those poor little guys. I feel bad for them. It must be a lot to be. It's feeling hard to so, regulate. Yeah, you're like up and down constantly. The it's like one thing goes wrong. On the moms what? Too. So the little girls are tough on the moms too. That I, like I can do no wrong. Like I every time my daughter sees me, she's like, oh, like I, and then just brutal on her. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're t- it's tougher for us. And then you have a boy, a little boy. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. The the baby. Everyone complains about the baby. I think the baby stage is so much easier than the toddler stage yeah having a baby is so lovely <laughs> they just sit there yeah they're so cute they yeah. sit there and they love you and they and then that's it and you just get like love from them whereas you get a lot of grief from toddlers <laughs> like everything you do is not right 
which is hard. Yeah. I, I, I know, Michael. <laughs> you sit there and you have no idea what we're talking about. But well, I try to be supportive. Speaking of having a, a baby, when you decide you want to have a baby and you're filming all this and you've got so much going on, you've got this huge life, how are you balancing everything? There is no balance. I know. I mean, I think that's the first... Any, uh, yeah, any, any little hack. Any hack. I don't know. If you figure it out, let me know. I'm looking for any kind of balance. But don't you feel in a way like <laughs> so my, when people ask, I'm like deep, deep I feel in. like in a way it focuses you a little bit more because you're so intentional with your time. Because I, the way I look at it is any time that is away from my kids, like it's really got to be worth it. Right. The job's got to be worth it. The that's, yeah, sitting that, on I mean, the runway for 18 hours. Yeah. So that's it. not. Yeah. Well, then now this is worth it. But this do you know, get what I point? Like, I feel no, like yeah, your perspective you. changes yeah. for sure. And like that is I don't know whether that's a hack, but it's like it helps you. It helps the pieces of your life kind of like fall into place a little bit, I think, when you have this other priority. And so, yeah, what you're saying is I think that I feel the same way where you go, wait, I'm going to be this job is going to take me away from my family for X, Y, Z, or I'm going to have to move them in an inconvenient way for this amount of time. And like, yeah, I think it's that that is that changes it, it's a big change, you know. So um, what do you do if you have to go away for a movie? You get to bring... I bring my family with me. Wow. Yeah. But that's also like an adventure, I feel like. It's also fun. No? It's hard, I think. Oh, I'm sure. Because I work... Usually, I work like 15-hour days, you know. So I don't... I, if I'm going to be working on something and have to relocate everybody, it's... You know, it's a, it's adventurous in some ways, but it's for, you know, for the kids. But they also need stability, too. So now that my daughter is older, I really, you know, I, I don't work in the same way that I used to work when I was, you know, 25 years old. And just like you're, you know, you can that's all your your fo your whole focus is that, you know, it's like work. And, you know, I mean, it for at least it was for me anyway. It was just like I was very career driven and focused at that time and less focused on you know, my own personal growth or whatever. Is that why you decided <laughs> to launch your brand? I decided to launch my brand because I f felt like I was in a place where I had a point of view and I could do something. I had the, I had the curiosity to have a startup and understand what the risks of that were. Um, you know, because it is risky, right? And it's not like we're not a co massive company backed by like some huge conglomerate. Like all of this, this the outset is is a personal project, you know, and it's really comes from my passion for skincare. I had acne for a lot for like my entire. Why don't I ever picture you with acne? I cannot. I had, you know, I was always. I always had makeup on for events. Like in my personal life, I struggled with acne for such a long time to the point where my makeup artist was like, you're going to get, um, she was like, you have acne now and then soon you'll have wrinkles and acne. And I was like, great, this is, <laughs> was like, there's got to be an end. I, it was such, it was tough because, you know, I do, we do job, a job where you're in front of, you're, you know, photographed and closely and, you know, you're, it was something that was like constantly on my mind. Um, and it wasn't until, and I was using very drying, aggressive treatments on my face constantly, like whether it was like exfoliants or like chemical exfoliants or drying creams or trying to do like dietary, like, you know, trying to cut out certain things or trying to understand like what was causing all this acne and then just making it worse and worse for like a decade of time. And then it wasn't until I started just – was like, you know what? I'm going to stop everything. I'm just going to do a gentle exfoliation and just moisturize and like put – just give myself a break. And then my skin started healing itself. And that's all – and that that's actually what this line was born out of was that like gentle approach to skincare because it like – it completely changed my – it changed my life. It really did. Just not having that, you know, not not being, I mean, I don't think about my skin. I used to think about it constantly. And it's just by switching your products. It was purely by switching my products and my approach to my, 
you know, method of self-care, which was a lot of like, cl- I was constantly cleansing and stripping my skin because I just felt like that was you know, when you have acne, I think you feel like, oh, my skin is oily or it's dirty or I have to clean my pores out or, you know, so you're using all this aggressive stuff all the time. And it just was, it was like decades of just raw, you know, raw skin like that. And it really, it was, you know, it affects how you feel about yourself. Of course, sure. it's like t- occupies a lot of time. I think when you talk to anybody who, who has any kind of, you know, skin, what they, you know, perceive as some sort of issue or concern like it does definitely take up a lot of brain space well especially if it's being amplified and like you said you're on camera all the time and everyone's scrutinizing you and you're in all these different publications like people are you know whether you like it or not they're judging and they're looking like that's got to be something sure that makes it even you know maybe feel even more you know kind of you're even more self-conscious about it but i don't i don't even think i think anybody who has that and whether you're being photographed or not is is going to have feeling of course about it yeah everyone's like a micro celebrity on their social media right, right. so they're like photographing them. especially <laughs> now yeah people zooming in and everything uh, is there a certain oh, no. diet <laughs> that you follow it like paleo vegan or do you just eat intuitively no i i mean i have in the past explored certain diets if i was like uh preparing for something um but no i i i eat intuitively if you're preparing for something is it like weightlifting is it pilates is it well let me cut let, let me tell you something here do you you're, do you know the black widow learned you learn learns on a big she's not a big uh comic book nerd i'm a huge comic book nerd. A huge I see he's when, a huge when comic you book go nerd. out for a role like that one do you know the length of time you're going to be cast as that like i mean did you know there's like 18 movies that you're signing up for and that you have to basically learn 18 different forms of martial arts or are you just kind of like hey i'm going for one movie and we'll see what happens um i mean it was you know at that time it was the se- i signed on for the second iron man movie and so it was not you know the the it was th- that genre of filmmaking wasn't established like it is now are you one of the longest running uh, i'm trying to think of like who else has been maybe robert downey jr was robert in robert and uh yeah i mean there's other i i it's because you, know, you were in the second Iron Man, so what is that? Is that like the fourth or fifth? In- uh, for Marvel, it was the se- it was actually the second MCU movie. Oh, it was. I didn't realize yeah. that. Wow. Okay, so yeah. you were super early in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, there's like 18 movies. How here. do take- you prepare for that? What is, what is the workout? What is the what is is it cut carbs? What do you do? It's a lot of <laughs> it pressure. Ch- it's changed over time because that was a, that was you know when I made that film, I was 25 or wow. something, 24. Um, and I had never been to a gym in my entire life. So <laughs> stop. It, well, I was 24. I mean, I, it changed my life in a lot of ways, but it changed my whole outlook on exercise and like, you know, I mean, it, it was life changing for me. So what kind of exercise? I, I, I'm reading here. Is this a true I, stat? No, you have to, Hold Michael, you, she has to quick, tell Is this a true stat that you are the highest grossing box office star of all time because of the all the movies that you've been in in that universe is I, that true is that I, what somebody told me that yesterday for the first i would i not me. heard that i would have i thought it was sam sam jackson or robert because, but because somebody it, told me yesterday that i had surpassed them but i'm sure it's just till the next sam jackson movie comes out because i mean look there's like 18 i mean it, i i went recently and had to go back and like catch up on all of them and now it's so it's deep and it, took, it took me like two weeks to get he's through someone it. that can how did you have that much time yeah i know i don't you hide you hide so you hi- i catch you i get up early in the morning when nobody's awake and he that's when i get five. the time and then you I watch you're there. watching doctor strange at 5 a.m <laughs> no listen, way i'm gonna be dead honest i i've kind of lost track of the shows because there's so many i watch your show i did but what then, show the um, what's the, the 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 one with the the Cold War and the you, you, it was the show it was on the Disney Plus what's the show Wolf? Captain America. No 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 no. The I other wasn't sh- in that show. No. I've never done a show for Marvel. <laughs> you haven't Black Widow. <laughs> Maybe you are watching the movies at five a.m. I don't know. I've seen. I just know that you're you're in a shitload of these things, right? And like, <laughs> how do you, um, that is a that's the exact number. I feel like they bamboozle you. They're like, hey, you're gonna sign up for this character, and next thing you know, you're in 18 films, and I'm sure it's 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 great from a career perspective. But you're in it forever. Like, how do you like when you're like, hey guys, like this is enough here. Um, I had a very unique you know trajectory with Marvel because I bit was there from the from the beginning, and so. Um, you know, I, yes, you, you know, when I signed on to do what to play Natasha Romanoff, it was like a lot of 
films and, you know, but they were movies that we didn't actually end up making. And so I was able to kind of go back in and say, you know, okay, these, this is, let's like, look at this again. We made this contract before kind of Marvel knew what they were doing and let's sort of figure out like what the path of this character is going to be. And, and honestly, like I've had, I love my Marvel family and Kevin Feige, who's, who's you know our boss man over there is so um you know he he loves working with actors so much he's such a cinephile he like lives and breathes this stuff he's an incredible storyteller and an amazing person on many many levels and is a really special collaborator and I think he you know he never wants to make anything that actors don't want you know want to be he's never going to hold you to to be in something if you're not if you're not on board and don't want to play, yeah, exactly. then like he doesn't. No, nobody's wants. You know. And by the way, just there. so I don't look like a bozo that hasn't researched, it, Black Widow was released on the Disney Plus thing. That's why I got confused because yes. I thought because I didn't go and see it in a don't movie. Don't screw with his comics. No, he knows I, his comics. I knew that, but it wasn't a show. It was the movie Black Widow was yes. released. If on I Disney try to Plus. watch was, anything out of order, he, he won't this, let me watch it out of order. He won't let me do anything. I have to watch Listen, it in order. See, I have to have a notebook to keep track of when to what the timeline, who wouldn't watch you need what's a show what's it's not a lot yeah there's some's on the movie some's on the platform it's confusing it is i don't i'm i understand yeah. i understand your pain Lauren's like what the hell are you talking about she wants to get back to the skin i, I get it no but i, I want to get back to how second. you stay in shape for these movies like what is the workout that we need to be doing we, the i i did i did weight lifting for a long time that was my thing i liked lifting heavy and low reps that was like mining everybody has their own thing and i liked that but i got to an age when i was actually training on black widow and, um, you know, I think it's hard to lift heavy weights at a certain point. You just uh, your body reacts in a different way than it, it's the recovery is is tough. And so I was started doing Pilates to try to give myself a break from some of the heavy weightlifting. And I just fell in love with it. And now I do that mostly most regularly Lord, i'm going to I show you some sometimes. of these black widow moves on i'm going to p- pull it up in the ipad and you're going to be like what the hell's going on here <laughs> i'm watching the horse whisperer yeah the horse whisperer <laughs> d- it's a different vibe right <laughs> yeah that involved less chicken it shows her range she has a so lot of range. no snapping necks and firing machine guns in that one this is okay a, this michael is a i have to ask another question okay, about the right. pilates when you go to pilates are you doing private pilates are you doing it at home are you going to a class like what's the what's the way you do pilates um i do pilates i do private sessions with a teacher yeah and do you um, do it like six days a week five days a week um it depends when i'm shooting i i train five days a week when i'm not probably four three four what are your health and wellness hacks you obviously have your skincare nailed down you have your pilates what are your things in your toolbox that you use a lot there are no hacks to health and wellness it's <sighs> all like this you know it's just i don't know what they are i honestly and I'm, I try to, I think for me personally, doing physical exercise, you know, as many times a week as I can do keeps me like mentally sane. And that is, that goes a long way because I'm not getting as much sleep as I should be. I try to nap if I can, you know, when the kids are napping, when my baby's napping, I'm trying to nap when I can. I eat too late. You know, I like love to have a glass of wine at the end of the day. I'm not a person that's going to like I don't have time for to make, you know, I'm not going to be able to have stick to some crazy diet unless somebody is like making food for me. And that drives me crazy, too. I love to cook. I'm a very like casual person in that way. And so I think my go to thing is that I try to do physical exercise as you know whenever i i can in the week because it helps my whole like mental well-being what kind of wine are you drinking our audience loves details is it (laughs) red is it white is it rosé what is it um i like red wine uh and i like a rosé sometimes and you know and i i love to hear that you drink wine i I don't really love wine I'm more of a margarita person, really, but um, same. I'll, I'll go for a glass of wine. I'm a margarita person. I'm, I'm a wine. How margarita. good is a margarita? Nothing better. I don't think there's a better cocktail. It's a delicious and perfect cocktail. Yeah, I don't think there's a. We better had one. our outset party last night, and they made like a some kind of a margarita that was like 
it had chamomile in it, so it was supposed to be relaxing. By the way, I have a hung hangover today from it. But um, <laughs> it it was it, I was talking to the bartender about it. And I said, "Is it annoying when people order margaritas because it's so simple?" And he said to me, "He was like, it is the best cocktail." He agreed. The bartender who was the very knowledgeable and making all these things with like mm. herbal essences or whatever agreed that a simple margarita is the best cocktail. It's so good with a half rim of tahini too. What's that? Like the spicy salt. Oh, the red the stuff? The reddish yeah. one, yeah. That is it, delicious. It kind of yeah. blows you up, but that's okay. Why is it so good? I don't know. It's so good. It has that tart kind of – what's that tarty like flavor? Uh, yeah. Or what, it's bitter? I don't know what it is. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's, it's just perfect with like a skinny margarita. Mm. The Skinny Confidential, him and her show, is brought to you by BetterHelp. Who doesn't want to do therapy out of the comfort of their own home? There is nothing worse than having it to get in the car, check in, sit in the waiting room, run into someone that you knew from high school, and then go into a therapy session and then come out and have to go home. It's just like a lot. I personally think this is convenient, flexible, and amazing if you're like me and you like to save time, but you also want to get your wellness in. So BetterHelp, entirely online, convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, all you have to do is fill out this super short questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. And I think this is important to note. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if you don't vibe with the therapist, if you don't like them, you can easily seamlessly switch. BetterHelp connects you to a licensed therapist who can take you on the journey of self-discovery. You could talk about childhood trauma. You could talk about burnout at work. You could just talk about where you're at in life. I personally have found after interviewing so many high performers that therapy is a huge tool in people's toolbox. I think it's something that we can really lean into, especially if we have the right therapist. You can do better help on audio so you don't have to call in on a video screen or you could also do video. It's up to you. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com skinny today. You get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot slash skinny. Even if you're somebody that's already in a job, you have a career, there's nothing wrong with having an online resume, an online space, an online store, an online side hustle, an online blog, anything, something that you fully control. You never know if you're going to want to monetize that, if you're going to want to turn it into something more. Look what the Skinny Confidential small blog turned into. It stemmed a company, it stemmed a product line, it stemmed a podcast network, all starting from a simple website online. And making a website has never been easier. So if you're somebody who's wondered for a very long time, how do I create a website? How do I create something of my own? How do I not just create content on these third-party platforms? How expensive is it? How do you do it? Squarespace has it all for you. Like I said, it is your one-stop shop to build e-commerce stores, to build newsletters, to control all your traffic and view all your analytics in one place. And like I said, it's never been easier or more cost-effective. One thing I mentioned and that I really love about Squarespace is you also own all of your own content that you put on the Squarespace platform. That is not the same for the content you put on third-party platforms. So if you're someone who's been thinking about building your own website or you've wanted to sell your own brand or products online, this is your answer. You could also incorporate your newsletter and all of your analytics, like I said, all in one place, and you completely control it. So check it out today. Get started. It's never been a better time to build your own website and control your own platform. It's also never been easier. Head to squarespace.com slash skinny for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code skinny to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash skinny. If you're a regular listener of this show and you're wondering, what supplement do I start with? Where do I get started? They talk about so many different products, so many different services. I don't know where to begin. This is the answer for you. It is AG1 Athletic Greens. This is your starter pack to get into a daily nutritional supplement, your daily multivitamin, your daily prebiotic and postbiotic, and your daily adaptogens and minerals all in one place. Athletic Greens has been a staple of this show, a staple of our routine now for almost four years and it really delivers on its promise, which is delivering one of the most complete multivitamins, adaptogens, minerals, prebiotics on the market. What I really love about this is it forces me each morning to have a heaping glass of water. It's one of the most important things you can do. So many of us are running around dehydrated. I wake up, pour a huge glass of water, dump a scoop of athletic greens, and that gives me all of my greens, all of my minerals, all of my daily nutritional values. Don't just take it from me. Everybody's talking about this. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. And and it's all clean. Did I mention it also does not break the fast? It's keto, it's paleo, it's all friendly, no sugars, no additives. It's made with 75 super high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients that deliver benefits like mood, immune system, and sleep support, sustained energy, and so much more. 
So if you're ready to check it out and you want to take ownership over your health today is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash skinny. That's athleticgreens.com slash skinny. Check it out. How involved are you on the business end of... Uh, that was a transition. Uh, this is a transition. <laughs> Margaret, this podcast gotta, is like listen, a we, thing of checks mix. You never know what it, you're going to get. We got to get it all in. No, well, we do. I want to know how involved you are on the business side. Is it something where you just give your opinion? Like, is it something where you're on calls every day with like building the business? So are you involved in the social media? Like, what do you have your hands in with the company? This, do you pop in on the Zoom screen and start yelling at the supplier? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, n- no, that I don't do. <laughs> that Kate Foster does. <laughs> Who's here? That's her. That's her territory. Um, you imagine being that supplier and you pop in, dress as Black Widow. Maybe I should you. start popping in. Actually, we'll talk about it. <laughs> maybe things would be a little more. Things might seamless. streamline a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's definitely. You know, we have our. Uh, we have a. You know, we have our board meeting today. At the end of our work day today, we're doing our board meeting. We. Um, you know, it is a. Um, it's, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that goes into having, uh, you know, a startup, especially when you have, as my best, my best girlfriend said to me, she was like, having a product you have to make and then store and ship to people (laughs) that is a physical product is, it's so hard. It's such a hard, especially with a lot of the challenges that are happening now. And over the past few years, we launched during the pandemic it was, you know, it had its own unique challenges, the supply chain, et cetera. Um, but, you know, we are, it's, you know, we're scrappy. And I, and that's one of the, that's what I like about our, about our company. You know, it really is a total labor of love and passion from everybody that works at our company. We're small, but we're mighty. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is. It takes up a lot of brain space, though. I imagine it's also fulfilling in a different way because you've done so much in in your other career, which is acting, and like this is maybe in some ways new and a different kind of challenge and a different kind of beast to take your, your arms around. It's a around. whole other environment. Like last night, we had our one year birthday party. It was a really fun cocktail party, and we had all these different beauty editors and like influencers and really interesting people in a world that is brand new to me. And yep. so just getting to meet people that are, you know, passionate about skin, passionate about beauty and this whole industry is it's it is really fun. It's just completely different than anything that I've done before. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, and I was going to ask you like when you think about your your adjacent career in acting like for how much you've done, like does that do you still get excited about roles you're like, "Oh, like it's really you got to really be selective now cuz you've done so much." Like, do you still get the same kind of fire in your belly that you had in the beginning? Or you're just like, ah, it's got to be right at this point. I do. I love my job, you know, more than I ever loved it. I understand it better than I ever have. And I hope to continue to understand it even more. Um, It is a, I think acting is a, you know, it's, it's something that grows forever. It's like, it's limitless. And you, the more you experience in life, I think the deeper you understand the work that you do and... I, I love my job. I absolutely love it. It's definitely harder to do it in some ways than it was before just because of, you know, when you have kids and whatever, you're, everything is more challenging because of the imbalance balance that you sure. were talking about earlier. But it's not my passion for performance is so, so strong. And I love working with other actors. I have a production company called These Pictures and we have a whole bunch of stuff we're developing for myself or other people. I love that process of development. And um, and I think similarly, the outset is like like my production company. It's it's that same process of development, creative co- collaboration and then feedback that I really enjoy. So you're not someone that's like, hey, you know, one day I'm riding off into the sunset and you'll never see me again. You you like the craft and you think it'll continue. Um, I I definitely I don't know that I'll be making movie after movie after movie like acting forever but I mean I'm sure that will slow at some point but it doesn't mean that I won't transition into other parts of filmmaking I love I I can't imagine what else I could possibly do that would be you know I nothing comes to mind that that would like take me away in the way that you're describing I'm not the type of person that could just move 
to you know some beautiful locale and just you know disappear yeah. disappear forever <laughs> like, yeah. i wouldn't know how to do that i think your skincare line is very smart because you're we're so inundated with products when you get on social media you're there is 10 step 12 step all these different things and you've really refined and simplified it which i think is really smart if you were to tell our audience to start with one product out of the line and I'm also going to give the one product that I think I would start with. But you go first. What would it be? Um, probably the cleanser because it is so gentle and so it, it's you can use it for everything. <laughs> like I've, you know, I've it's for. I mean, I probably should not. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this, but it's such a like. I had like this like. Um, like the wound that I had on my arm and I was like using it to wash with it because it actually is so gentle um, that you can like it's never going to sting it's never going to react to anything you're using if you're using active things on your we always say our you know the outset plays well with others you can be using all that active stuff and wash your face with our cleanser and it's never going to have any kind of crazy reaction with anything and we also have refillables of it which I think is you know, you get a great value. It's responsible in different ways. And, you know, I think it's just for me, like it's the kind of pillar. Were there pillars of this brand when you started it that you wanted to hit? Yes. The cleanser was definitely one of them. You know, I was like really a Cetaphil kind of user, just like gentle, you know, cleanser. You're very approachable with your, with your tips. Cetaphil. <laughs> But you know what? It's so funny That's because when I, I see, I went Cetaphil. When was no, Cetaphil? You were using like Old Spice on your balls and like Cetaphil on your <laughs> neck. He, I had to refine everything he was doing. But go on. Oh yeah, the, that, set, <laughs> that Old Spice on your balls <laughs> hack is really outdated. Um, no, I I was using Cetaphil and um, and then when sponsor. I what did you say? It's another never going to sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you'll be the face maybe of it. Be, yeah. Or the balls of it. Cetaphil. <laughs> Um, but uh, no, I, I when I started uh, when we started pulling apart, like all we're like, okay, we're gonna you know commit ourselves to. We started going down this avenue of making of doing clean products. It's kind of a nebulous term, but how can we eliminate as many harmful ingredients as possible while still being effective? Because we want as many people to be able to use it. And myself and my co-founding partner Kate both have very sensitive skin. I have acne prone skin. She has a lot of like redness in her skin, and so. When we started pulling apart, okay, this is our benchmark. You know, I love Cetaphil face wash or whatever. It's full of so much stuff that you can't even believe what's in there that it was like, oh, we can't, this, we can never make this formula clean. Like it's not, you know, and then you start to kind of say, okay, well, what is the, like, what's the journey going to be to get something that has this performance, but actually is not, you know, is like not, doesn't have these crazy ingredients that are really bad for the environment and for yourself. And so, the cleanser was definitely one of them. Um, I was very big on this prep step, and so that's how we came to this serum initially. Like, I really wanted to wanted it to have like a glow concept, and then when we started understanding, okay, well, if it's a glow concept, then it has to have like some, you know, it has to have some kind of, you know, filler in it that's going to basically sit on your skin and not do anything. It was like, well, what gives you glowing skin? Like, it's the moisture, and it really kind of opened up the whole line you know once we understood okay can we get a you know hyaluronic acid can we do that in a botanical way and we started playing around with this kasha flower and we created this hyloracet complex which is a botanical alternative to hyaluronic acid it's in all of our products and it's super super moisturizing like gives you this crazy moisture boost and um yeah and th these are like these are that's kind of how we started developing the line just was very like I said, every single step was just very intentional. Um, initially, we had a lip product that we wanted to launch because that was a really important thing for me. But it wasn't, you know, we got all the way, all the way to the end. And then it was like, oh, wait, it's not shelf stable. You know, these are the things that you realize. You have the best lips in Hollywood. Everyone tells you that. I mean, Thanks. so many girls I feel like have brought your lips to their doctor. And right? been like, want your natural lips. <laughs> oh. I mean... I feel like a lip product is it I would I the lip product you know what we finally kind of cracked it like a few weeks ago I think we finally it took a really long time it's hard to make products clean it just really is you'll do or there'll be you'll have a product that's perfect and then you'll go oh wait it has like this trace element of nut in it and we're not allergen free and we're gluten free and we you know we 
it's a it's the product process people don't realize how long it takes to develop products especially if you're not white labeling it takes a long time a long long process and we have a very high standard but that's why i think we have such a great like customer repeat rate is that the standard is high across the board and we're like not cutting corners but it does take a very long time the product that i think that the audience would really like to i always say this wrong is it serum yes okay this is the serum and i'll tell Wait, you how why. do you say it serum listen we get so many reviews you of said the- you pronounce everything wrong we have I a collection of bad reviews just based on how she pronounces yeah, things it's kind of anything. a thing at this point where are you from <laughs> This really foreign place I'm called San Diego, California, and I just can't pronounce things. Huh. Um, but the reason that I would say that is because the way that you just said it plays well with others and the way it lays on your skin, I can tell mixes well with the concealer. There is nothing worse when I put on a serum on my skin and it balls up like yeah, white like pilling. Yeah, there's nothing worse. Yeah. And it's great under makeup. That's what I can tell on both you and Kate's skin. It's like yeah. very glowy. I wear it under makeup for film too. It doesn't have that pilling thing. That's really yeah. like because the best if you have a makeup ever. artist that starts to use a sponge on you and then they're like chasing these little balls of stuff. No, that's it's, Michael that's has no fucking idea what we're talking about. But what know. about all your steps? His well, I just do what I, I'm doing whatever you guys tell me. I'm going to go back and I'm going to use this cleanser. Wait a minute. And use the serum and, can yeah. we talk about this colostrum thing for a minute? It's so yeah. weird. <laughs> you are putting someone else's breast milk on your face and you're ingesting it? Listen, is I, it a human being? I am not going to say I haven't done that before, but in this oh, case... Oh, that, that, was your, that was your partner. Yeah. That was your wife. That's yeah, but different. In, in well, this case, so. it's a product... By the way, I take colostrum in powder form too. It's really good for From me. where system. is it coming? Yeah, what's the, what's the company? It oh, starts with it an starts A. With we it, love it. it it's, an, it's an A. Uh, I'm going to find it. But anyways, I don't know. I was, Is it human colostrum? Yeah, it's amazing. I, what? Listen... Wait a minute. Hold on Scarlett, a second. I have people like you come the on the show. The amount of time. The, the, first of all, how little colostrum any woman gets, it's like two days. Is it, every woman going to come out and be like, this guy is using our colostrum. He's just rubbing it <laughs> all over his face. There's poor little babies that are like all, they have our immune systems are all yeah. messed up because you're taking, you're taking the colostrum. They're gold. Ugh. Listen, the babies will understand. I'm coming here. I'm looking like the guy from the Goonies off the plane last night. I need whatever colostrum I can get on my face. And I'm going to switch now to your products because what I do is I wait for... He extra really sec- does have a full routine. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Like Patrick Bateman. Like, I'm not joking. Well, the hair. It's here's the thing. I sit here like a dope and I nod my head about these terms that I don't understand. But then I see the results. I'm like, okay, I might as well do it. Right. Like, I, I think that's a smart. Like I would have to be kind of a moron to not to, Definitely. to do this stuff. Yeah. Can we do a giveaway right? for our audience? You're, you're not on social media, huh? You're not on Instagram. Well, the outset is I am not though. Oh, is that a choice that you made like strategically? Are you just sick of it after you get off work? Like what's, what, what is that? I honestly am too fragile a person to have social media. I can't, I, my ego is too fragile. Really? Yeah. I, don't I feel see like that. You, you would get like it is, a lot can. of support. I can't deal with it. I have an, I have so it's much. Probably smart though. My brain is too fragile. I'm like a f- delicate flower. I can only. I like the I can only exist. I'm. I'm. I have enough. I have enough anxiety. You honestly. know what my tip is? <laughs> Don't read the comments. That like, would give me so much anxiety. I can't. Well, you can't. There's no way you can win either way. Like you're. Di- like I had doing, Instagram yeah. once for three days, and I, when I started realizing that I'd spent 20 minutes looking at somebody's Instagram page who I will never, who is like worked for a friend of mine who had a family. I'm like, now I know you have a pit bull and two daughters and you live in like Burbank. I was like, what, what if I just wasted <laughs> 17 minutes of time. I now feel like I should move to California, get this specific dog and change my life in all these ways. I felt so Bad, like I was missing out on this random person's life. I, I can't do this. I'm too fragile. I, I have so much anxiety that. about other things. I, I can't. So you don't even go on. I go on to the outset to look at our what we're putting on there. I still think I'm not using it properly, so I can't actually get updated information. I don't know. I can't. I, when I go into the office, they show me what what we're doing, and we also make terrible videos. <laughs> Kate and I make. Terrible videos. We're both so bad at it, but it's fun. We do reader, we read review, customer reviews. I like to do that. I like to read the customer reviews and perform them for people on TikTok, but I don't have TikTok. 
So you just have the account. You're just, you, yeah, that's the right way to do it though. Yeah, just use it as a tool it. because I think the people that get sucked in and that, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, it's definitely fun. TikToks, every time I see it in our office, I then become like, a three-year-old with their mom's phone where I get completely absorbed into it. It's so that's why I know I can't have it. What I like yeah, it is distracting. It is distracting. It's, it's a fun big now. distraction. It what is, I like but about it looks doing really this fun. is I, like, I just think that it's just us three. Then I forget later that it goes out to everybody. But it's because it's like in this environment where it's not, I'm not getting instant feedback from like a comment, right? It's just like, it's going to go out at some point and then people will hear it. But yeah, but I'm there's not, no comment section. Yeah, there's no well, comment. I guess there's like reviews, but there's no comment section, which is Yeah, the nice. reviews are going to be like, hey, this guy's stealing all the baby's colostrum and what an asshole. Right, yeah. 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 They are going to say Let's that. Let's make you the bad guy. I have one other question for you. How do you, how do you manage, like, I, I would imagine at points it gets irritating like you a guy like me pops in you're getting in the elevator and i pop out of nowhere and you don't know who i'm like oh shit <laughs> right like that that happened on the way up here we're not gonna lie guys like yeah what is this um but that probably happens to you, you on came a regular... on you came in hot in the oh, elevator yeah, yeah. well you know i was like hold the, I, I didn't want to wait to be honest i'm an impatient person so i wanted to get in the elevator so oh. I'm like, hey but um i imagine that at times can be good and at other times it's like whoa like in you have so much attention all the time like can does that get irritating at times or you're just like, hey, it's part of the gig? Um, yeah, of course it, it does. It can be irritating. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and, and it's part of the gig, I guess. It's both irritating and part of the gig. You ever um, get sick of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely is. I think mostly not not if people are being respectful and fine, but if someone is being rude and obnoxious, then yeah, it, it, that that would irritate anybody i guess if they're chasing you down into an elevator how to know where at right yeah right i mean nobody wants to be photographed when they don't think they're being photographed nobody wants to be taken you know uh exploited in that kind of way i don't think any person would want that yeah i imagine that's challenging because you have to be polite and nice and grateful that you have that kind of you don't have to be polite polite and nice and grateful Great. Okay, perfect. See, Lauren, I told you. <laughs> perfect. I believe in here. being polite, but I don't think you have to be nice to people. I'm well, like, you know what I think the line is? Like, if you have your kids with you and stuff, I think people should just know, like, hey. Sometimes people do, and sometimes they don't. And you say, you know, I'm with my, I'm having a private moment with my family, and thank you for supporting my work. And I feel like this day. episode needs to be called Scarlet's Boundaries because you do have <laughs> good boundaries with social media. I mean. It is a lot about boundaries. Life is all about boundaries, yeah. isn't it? A giveaway. <laughs> can we give away your favorites? Uh, can we give away our favorites? Sure. We are going to do a giveaway, you guys. All you have to do is tell us your favorite takeaway from this episode on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. It's going to be the colostrum piece. It's going to be the colostrum piece. And then colostrum. definitely follow at the outset on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, you and could we'll watch our, you- We could watch our comment, our reader reviews. Very yeah, popular. go review it. Do a great review, and, and then you'll I'll act read them it for out. you. Be yeah. honest, you're gonna look into the colostrum, aren't you? <laughs> I'm totally doing it. I know, I know you are. I'm fascinated by this. Yeah, I know. Hey, I just want to know where it comes from. I mean, <laughs> don't a cow? you? A cow. And I'm so. What I'm really curious about is that what's interesting to me is that you don't seem to have any curiosity about where it comes well, from. Well, because I believe that my wife gave it to me and that she has my best interest. Eh. But I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> Listen, I believe that what this this here is you, you, you right, know. but you have may, you may have curiosity about oh, what are these ingredients? What's in it? You need a it's also better not com- it's also not a, like a biohazard. I'm going to be honest. I stay in my lane of expertise. If you want to know, I don't know the right protein powder. I might be able to be like, hey, I think this one's the run with the right. But what kind of protein powder? I are like you this one right now. That's just three ingredients. It's like stevia, cacao, and then it's grass fed beef. It's only three ingredients. I you mean the, the the protein powder is is milk? No, it's just a powder. But it's literally and, and pe- the, for people that don't eat meat, they're not gonna like. But I like. There's only three ingredients. It has a dehydrated. It's powder. Yeah, but the the the, the protein is is cow milk or what is no, it? No, it's it's like actual like dehydrated like beef, grass fed. Oh. I know and it sounds gross, right? How but do you eat it? You just put it in a shake, shake it up, blender, Ooh. shake it up. He does that one at five a.m. when he's watching. It's oh, that's a lot of meat. Listen. I'm you sorry. Know, you're, you're, He's got a lot going on. There's breast milk on his face and meat. Watch. You're going to look into the protein powder I would tell too, every, I, I would don't... think so because apparently, sorry, I've, <laughs> you know, colon cancer is on the rise. And they say it's because we eat too much meat. Yes, poor meat. Bad sources of meat. 
that's why? You yeah, think it's the I source so. of me? Is, it's yeah, not I think just it's, the it's fact a, that it's It's the heat. same thing with like bad... So, now we're getting a real tangent here. Didn't know we were going to do this. Um, like bad <laughs> sources of, of plants, right? Like a lot of these plants have like pesticides and heavy metals. So it's right. like you've got to source everything, right? And I think you can kind of go with the spectrum, and it, you know. Um, so yeah, to your, I agree the with what you're saying. The best meat, by the way, I have to say, in my opinion, is force of nature. Have What's you ever that tried mean? that? It's the best meat. It's just a, it's a company. It's like sustainable and grass. They send it to you, raised, right? Get they, your, they will send it to you. Get your force of nature and your colostrum. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Listen, after this, and we're gonna I'm going to be absolutely we're gonna shredded after this, you guys. I'm going to send you a big bag of dried meat and, <laughs> and some colostrum. Breast, and some random and person's breast spice. milk. Yeah, and I'll write a handwritten note I would Michael. say, where can we find you? But you're not on social media, so we can follow at the outset. And then how do we find the uh, website? Uh, our website, uh, you can, well, you can find us at, in stores at Sephora. Okay. Um, or you can find us on the outset.com. And we have a code, Skinny. Do we know how much it is off? Okay, you guys can use code SKINNY for 15% off. Nice. The mask, the cleanser, the serum. We have a, a face polish that's great. Face polish. You can use it every day. Get it all. Scarlett, you're a real one. Thanks for coming on. You're amazing. This was so much fun. Thank you for doing Thank this. Thank you, guys. I have a lot of questions after this. <laughs> a lot. You guys got answers and I have questions. 